Right, so Adam Koo here. Welcome to this video on the seven powerful facts about the stock market that's guaranteed to make you rich, part two. If you have not watched part one, go look for part one and watch part one. All right, let's continue. Now, let me do a quick review on the first four facts we've learned in part one of this video. Fact number one, stocks are the best builder of wealth. Fact number two, the stock market always goes up in the long run. Fact number three, the stock market makes annual gains 75% of the time. Fact number four, stock prices move in cycles or trends. So, question is this, if the stock market always goes up in the long run, if the stock market has delivered 11% return consistently on average for the last 30 years, then why, oh why, do many people who invest in the stock market only achieve 3 to 4% returns? Why is it that most financial advisors or banks will tell you, you know, be happy if 3 to 4%, 10 or 11% is unrealistic, 20% is even more unrealistic. Why does that happen? Or why is it there are even people who lose money in the stock market? You know, how is it possible to lose money in the stock market when the stock market always goes up in the long run? How is this possible? And the reason is, well, there are three reasons, right? Reason number one, why people make low returns and even lose money in the stock market is because of emotions. Emotions cause people to buy at the worst time and to sell at the worst time, okay? Emotions cause most people to buy at a high price and sell at a low price and obviously lose money. That's not how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to buy at a low price and sell at a high price. Now, the question is, why do most logical, sane people do the opposite? It is because people tend to make decisions based on emotions, right? Now, when do most people buy stocks or make investments? They do it when they think times are good, right? When everyone is investing, that's when I should invest, right? So most people buy during times of high optimism, right? So here's the funny thing. Well, we learned previously that markets move in cycles, right? So we've got the bull cycle, the bear cycle, the bull cycle, the bear cycle, the bull cycle, right? Now, here's the thing. The, the trouble is most people tend to start buying when it's at the end of a bull cycle. Why, why do most people buy here? Because as the market has gone up for some time, that's when they start to see, hey, you know what? Everyone's making money except me. You know, the market keeps going up. And this is the point of maximum optimism. Let me write this down. Maximum optimism. When everyone is feeling good about the stock market, that's when the man on the street will jump in. Correct? That's right. So that's when most people will buy over here at the end of a bull market. And guess what happens after they buy? Right? The price goes down. Right? Goes down. They say, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. And guess what happens after one or two years? They start to panic. Right? And they, they will sell when there is maximum pessimism. When everyone says, you know what? You know, the market will never recover. It keeps going down to lose everything, but they get up before it's too late. Oh my God, I'm going to sell. Right? And they sell here. They sell here at the point of maximum pessimism. Right? So they buy high, they sell low, they end up make, losing money. And guess what happens after they sell? Boom! The market goes up. They say, shit! Ah! Right? And they say, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. It's going to go down. It's going to go down again. I don't trust it. Right? But eventually, what's going to happen is they see everyone making money again over here. Right? So as it keeps going up, going up, going up, going up, again, maximum optimism. Hey, everyone's making money except me. I'm going to buy again. So they buy over here. Guess what happens after they buy? Boom, it goes down. They go, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And they get so scared, they sell. And again, they lose money. And once they lose money, boom, it goes up again. Right? And that's how the market screws people. Okay? It screws people who think short term. It screws people who get emotional. But people who think logically, who understand the winters and summers, who invest without emotions, they're the ones that make all the money. So you can too, but you've got to think differently. So that's reason number one. Do not let your emotions drive your investment decisions. Use logic and use statistics. So let's move on to reason number two. Reason number two why people could still lose money in the stock market is because they buy the wrong companies. Right, they buy lousy businesses. Okay, now I said previously that the stock market always goes up in the long run. 
and that you always win if you hold long enough, right? Again, this only applies to the index. For example, if you take the Dow Jones index, the Dow Jones is the 30 biggest companies. If you take the S&P 500 index, it's the 500 biggest companies. Now, they always go up, guaranteed. But individual companies could die, okay? So, how, so the trouble is if you bought a lousy company, for example, if you bought Nokia, and you know Nokia used to be a good company, it used to sell 90% of all the smart, the handphones, right? But now Nokia has dropped to less than 1% market share. So if you bought Nokia, you would have lost a lot of money over the years. No matter how long you hold it, you will lose money because you bought the wrong business. Now, of course, if you bought Apple, you'd be a different story. If you bought Apple or Amazon, you make a lot of money. So the question is, how do you avoid buying the wrong companies? Well, the answer is you have to learn how to buy the good companies. And that's in a more advanced course that I teach. But for now, the simplest method you can do, you can use, is to buy the index. Because remember that when you buy the index, you are diversifying over many companies. You don't buy one, you can buy 500 companies rolled into one. And the way to buy an index is using ETFs or exchange traded funds. So you can buy an exchange traded fund on ETF on the stock market as simple as you buy a stock, okay? So what I do and what I suggest people do, the, the safest way to invest is to buy the S&P 500 ETF and it's known as the SPY. Because again, if you buy this ETF, you're buying basically the 500 best companies in the US. And every time a lousy company gets dropped out, a better one gets put in, the ETF adjusts to the better company. So you're always with the 500 best companies. So that always guarantees that it will go up in the long run. Make sense? Now, I mentioned earlier that besides investing in the US market, the other market which is growing tremendously is the China market. China, right? Uh, specifically Hong Kong. So I also invest in the Hong Kong ETF known as the EWH. So by buying this ETF on the stock market, I'm essentially buying the 45 biggest companies in Hong Kong. You can also buy the Emerging Markets ETF, known as the EEM, and this ETF basically invests in all the emerging markets rolled into one. So you have got Indonesia, you've got uh, Thailand, you've got Brazil, you've got Argentina, Russia, Brazil, Russia, I said Russia, sorry, China, you know, all rolled into one. So by buying the ETF, you are essentially buying thousands of companies into one. And by doing that, you can never buy the bad company because you're buying all the companies it will always go up, okay? So I'm going to show you in a short while what the ETF looks like. Reason number three. Now again, there are many people who invest in the stock market and they do make money. But you know what? They make a miserable 3 to 4% return. Why do they get so low returns when you saw that in the last 30 years, the stock market has delivered 11%? But why do people only make 3-4%? It's because they pay very high fees and commissions to stockbrokers and mutual funds or unit trusts that charge them these high management and sales fees. Okay? So the solution is to buy, again, low-cost ETFs or exchange-traded funds because ETFs only charge 0.3 to 0.5% annual fees. Whereas if you invest in a typical mutual fund or we call it a unit trust, they charge you 1% annual fee plus 3 to 5% sales charge when you buy the fund. So imagine when you buy the fund, when you invest in a mutual fund or unit trust, you're paying 5% in sales charge to the agent plus 1% management fee, that's 6%, which means even before you start, you've lost 6% of your money, and that's a lot, okay? But when you buy an ETF from the stock market, you're just paying 0.3 to 0.5% uh, management fees, and there's no sales charge. You just have to pay a, a broker to the commission. What am I talking about? You pay a commission to the broker, right? Sorry, right? And again, if you use low-cost brokers, which, which I use, your commissions only add up to 2 or $3. So you save a lot of money on that.
If you'd like to learn more about ETFs and how to buy ETFs, do check out my videos on ETFs. Just go to my watch list on my channel, my YouTube channel, and scroll, look for how do you build a winning portfolio of ETFs, and you can watch a video just on that. And again, in our live training programs, as well as my online professional training course, I teach ETFs in detail. All right, so with that, let's move on to fact number five. And fact number five is that when you're in a bull market, it's a great opportunity to buy stocks. Bull markets are opportunities. Now, here are some facts about bull markets. Stock markets are in bull mode 90% of the time. 90% of the time, the stock market is in a bull market or on an uptrend. Again, that makes higher highs and higher lows. Now, bull markets are made of impulse and correction patterns. Now, what does that mean? That means that during a bull market, you have got what is known as an impulse. Impulse means the price going up. Correction, impulse, correction, impulse, correction, impulse, correction, impulse, correction, and you get what I mean, right? Now, corrections are temporary dips of 5 to 15%. So this is a correction, it's a correction, it's a correction, right? So these are corrections, and they typically... During a correction, the price typically goes down by 5 to 15%. Now, how long does a correction last? On average, a, a correction lasts for one to two months. And here's the thing, corrections are buying opportunities, right? Why? Because every time there's a correction, it allows the price to go lower for you to buy a lower price. And then it goes much higher. Goes lower, buy goes much higher. Make sense? Now, the million dollar question people always ask is, how do I know it's at the low of the correction? Like, how would I know that's the low? How would I know? How would, how would I know it's not going to go lower? Right? How would I know that this was not the end of the correction? How do I know that it's going lower? So hang on, I'll show you in a while how to tell when it's at the low of the correction. All right? Just hang on for a while in the next few slides. Okay, so here it comes. One of the tools I use is moving averages. Uh, and you can apply moving averages in any kind of charting software. So I'm using Think or Swim, uh, TD Ameritrade for the charting software, and I use the 50, 150, and 200 moving average. So these are moving averages. So moving averages are basically mathematical calculations that the charting software will do and apply on the chart. So one of the ways you know it's a bull market is when the 50 moving average is above the 150 moving average. In other words, whenever the blue line is above the green line and both lines are sloping up, it's a bull market. That's how you tell. And notice that again, during a bull market, whenever the price goes to a correction, it tends to find support at one of the moving averages. So over here, you can see a correction it finds a support at the 50 and it bounces back up. Right, it goes down, finds support near the 150, bounces back up again. Goes down, bounces back up. Right, so notice that every time it corrects, it would find support at one of the moving averages. There we go. There we go. Okay, so one of the techniques I use is really simple. Every time the price corrects and whenever it bounces off a moving average, that's when I'll buy in and then it go up again. Now, again, Sometimes it may bounce off the 50 and I may buy and it may go lower to the 150 and I buy again, right? So as long as, again, the 50 blue remains above the 150 green, it's in a bull market and you keep buying during dips and that's how you accumulate your stock at lower prices. So that's fact number five. Fact number six, bear markets are even bigger buying opportunities. So here are some facts about bear markets. Now, most people are afraid of bear markets. They are so afraid to invest because they say, what if a bear market is going to come? What if it's going to come? Uh, let me tell you something. It is going to come, okay? Winter will come eventually, but don't be afraid of winter. Expect winter and know how to profit from winter. That's the point. When you expect it, you know about it, you're prepared for it, you're not afraid of it, okay? So here are some facts about bear markets. Bear markets appear every 8 to 10 years on average, okay? Bear markets last 
for one to two years. So what's so scary about it? Bear markets don't last. They only last for one to two years. And during a bear market, stock prices tend to drop an average of 30 to 40% from its high. Great buying opportunity. Why? Because again, bear markets never last. Winter never lasts. After winter, summer will always come. Remember that, always. Bear markets are always followed by a bull market. Okay, so again, sorry, go back to that. So again, quick revision. Where are your bull markets? There's a bull market. There's a bull market. There's a bull market. Okay, and that's a bear market. That's a bear market. So again, notice that during a bear market, right, it typically drops by 30 to 40 percent. Let me just draw it over there. That gives you the chance to buy great businesses, great companies at 30 to 40 percent discount. It's like the great Wall Street sale, the great Singapore sale, right? Drop 30 to 40 percent. That's when you buy great companies at huge undervalued discounts. There we go, 30, 40 percent, right? And typically they last for two years. They always last for two years. There we go. And following every bear market, you will have the next bull market. You have the next bull market. Now, although we say that bear markets will always lead to bull markets, some of you will be thinking, yeah, I know that, but at the same time, I would like to you know, avoid buying during a bear market. Because although it will eventually go higher, but I don't want to see the price you know, going down in the short term. So when is the best time to buy in a bear market? Well, the best time to buy is only when the bear market bottoms and you buy at the beginning of a bull market, okay? Now, there's no way to know where's the exact bottom of a bear market until it happens. But what we can identify is the start of a new bull market. To get in at the start of a bull market, and I'll also show you how you can get out at the start of a bear market. So by timing your entry a bit more intelligently, that massively increases your returns on your investment. So that goes on to fact number seven, the last fact and the most important fact, which is bull and bear markets can be identified easily. It is very easy to identify the start of a bull market and the start of a bear market. And there are many strategies you can use to identify it. And I teach all these techniques in the Wealth Academy program that I run live in Singapore and Asia. But for now, I'm going to teach you the simplest technique that you can learn right away. That's going to help you to identify the turning points in the cycles. And again, the simplest method is to use moving averages, which you can plot on any charting software. So my favorite moving averages are the 50 moving average and the 150 moving average. Again, the blue line and the green line. So these are the basic rules. Always remember that on an uptrend during a bull market, Okay, the 50 moving average or the blue line is always above the 150 moving average green line. So as long as the blue line is above the green line, that's a bull market. Simple enough? Okay, uh, here's a simple way to remember. Remember that blue represents a smurf and green represents the incredible hulk, right? So as long as the smurf is on the hulk, the hulk can carry the smurf. So the price keeps going up. Just, that's a simple way which I teach my kids how to remember this, right? Now, how do you know when a bull market reverses into a bear market? How would you know? Now, there are two conditions that must happen for this to be confirmed. Number one, both moving averages from sloping up. Notice that during a bull market, both moving averages are kind of like sloping up. Can you see that? They are both sloping up. So the first condition is that both moving averages must flatten or slope down together. In other words, if one of them is sloping up, it is not a change in the cycle. They must both flatten and slope down. The second condition is that the 50 moving average has to cross below the 150 moving average. In other words, the blue line must go below the green line. And that confirms a bear market. So over here, you can see, do we have the two conditions? Yes, number one, you can see that the 50 crosses below the 150. So now, the Hulk is on the smurf. So remember that if the Hulk sits on the smurf, that's it, the smurf's going down, man, right? Next, notice that the blue line is sloping down and the green line is sloping down. So that fulfills the two conditions. This is the confirmation of a bear market. And if you're in a bull market, yes, you could exit just when the bear starts. 
and you can bet that for the next one to two years, prices will go down at least 30 to 40 percent. Now, there are some people who would just buy and hold during that period and keep buying more, and you can do that as well. But to get even higher returns, you could exit at the start of a bear market and then sit back while the market goes down and becomes a huge discount. Now the question is, when do you buy back? You buy back when the bear market reverses back into a bull market. And again, how would you know? Okay, so again, same thing applies. Remember, in a bear market, let me use a red ink pen. In a bear market, always remember that the blue line, the 50, is always below the 150. As long as the green line is above the blue line, it's a bear market. You never want to enter in a bear market. Okay, The, the river is flowing south. Now, how do you know that the bear has turned into a bull? Again, there are two conditions that must happen. Number one, both lines must stop sloping down. In other words, they must flatten and slope up. Both lines must flatten and slope up. Remember that. If one line is sloping down, it is not a change in trend. Condition two, the 50 has to cross above the 150. The blue goes back above the green with both lines sloping up. That's a bull market. So you can see there's a bear market over here. Now over here, take a look at this. Is this the start of a bull market? No, it isn't. Why? Although the 50 crossed above the 150, although the blue line crossed above the green line, but notice the green line is still sloping down, right? As I mentioned, as long as one of them is sloping down, it is not the change of a cycle, even with a crossover. So this is a false, uh, a false signal. So a lot of amateurs would buy that and say, hey, you know, it crossed, they buy it and poof, it keeps going down. Because it is not a change in trend while one of them is sloping down, okay? Now, over here, this is a change in trend. Again, notice the false signal was over here. Now, over here was another false signal, as you can see. Why? Again, the 50 crossed above the 150, but the 150 green line was still sloping down. So that is not a change in trend. It's still a bear market. Now, over here, this is a confirmed change in bull, a bear to bull market. Why? Do we have the two conditions? Yes, we do. Number one, we've got the 50 crossing above the 150, the blue line crossing above the green line, but more importantly, both lines are now sloping up. Can you see the blue sloping up, the green is sloping up? That's a confirmed bull market, and that is when you want to start buying aggressively in the start of the bull market. Okay? And once you're in a bull market, you just buy all the way. You hold and keep buying doing dips. Every time dips, you keep buying doing corrections. Now, over here, you can see that there was a crossover, okay? But again, this was a false bear because again, notice that the green line is sloping up, okay? Again, over here, you can take a look at over here. The green line is sloping up. As long as one of them slopes up, it is not a bear market. It's a bull market and over here, these are the short-term corrections where you buy more, you buy more as it corrects on the bull market. It's as simple as that. And that's fact number seven, right? Okay, so we've covered the seven facts. So let me summarize. So we said that the best way to build your wealth is to invest in the stock markets. Now, in my advanced trading courses and in my investment programs, I teach you how to pick the right companies that will give you the highest returns. But at this stage, if you do not know which companies to buy, simply buy the ETF, the index ETF, which basically means you're buying an ETF, a fund that tracks the index. So in the long run, the US ETFs and the Hong Kong ETFs return over 11% a year. Okay, so the question again is, when do you buy and when do you sell? Now, there are two approaches. The first approach is known as the buy and hold approach. This is what most financial advisors tell you to do. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't maximize your returns, but you still will make a money. So buy and hold is also known as dollar cost averaging. So in dollar cost averaging, it means you invest continuously a fixed dollar amount at regular intervals. For example, you decide to invest um, $5,000 every six months okay, or $10,000 every one year. So as long as it's a fixed amount and you invest regularly in the markets. So this guarantees that you average your price to a very low price. Okay, let's take a look at how 
uh, this approach could work. So let's imagine that you decide to invest $10,000 every year for 20 years. Okay, so what happens if you do that and you invest in the S&P 500 index ETF known as the SPY? So this is an ETF you can buy through your online broker quite easily. Okay, so let's imagine that in 1997, which is over here, you invest uh, $10,000 in this ETF. Now, in 1997, the price was at $99.45. That was the price of the ETF somewhere there. Well, sorry, my line's not straight. So it's somewhere there. So it's $99.45. Now, so with $10,000, how many shares can you buy at $99.45? So you take $10,000 divide by $99.45 to get 100 shares, right? So you buy 100 shares over there. There you go, you buy 100 shares. Okay? Now, one year later, what happens? In 1998, the market goes up to here. Right? The market goes up. So what do you do? You do the same thing. You invest the same $10,000 in the market. No more, no less. But now that the price is at $113, your $10,000 buy less shares. So 10,000 divided by 113 is 88 shares, okay? Now you just keep repeating the process. So next year, the price goes up to 139. And again, the same $10,000, you buy 72 shares. So notice that as the price goes higher and higher, you buy less and less shares, all right? And you continue the process. Now what happens in 2001? In 2001, that was the start of a bear market, right? Where the price went down from a high to here. So now the price has gone from 153 to 125. But you're still investing 10,000 a year consistently. So now with 10,000 at a price of 125, you now buy 80 shares. So you increase the number of shares you buy. Okay? And what happens in 2002? Okay, the price goes down even further down. The price goes down to $91, even lower than when it was $997. So by investing $10,000, what happens now? Now you buy 109 shares. So notice that by using this strategy, what happens? When the price is high, you buy less shares. When the price is low, you buy more shares. And what this does is it averages your cost price to an um, uh, average of the market over 20 years. All right. So let me just uh, show you the rest of it. All right, so if you invest like that, you notice that you would have invested a total of $200,000 because that's 10,000 times 20 years, right, 200 grand. And you've bought a total of 1,583 shares. So if you divide that, your average price per share is $126. So in other words, you would pay an average price of 126. Now, by using this strategy, it guarantees you never buy the high, but you also never buy the low. You buy at the average. And we know that the market will always go up over time, so you always make money because you're buying at the average level of the market. So this is known as the dollar cost averaging strategy. Okay? This is not my favorite strategy, but this is the simplest strategy. Now, what I do personally is I use more of a trend following strategy, which is what I taught you earlier on. So in trend following, it means that if it's a bull market, like again, this is the bull market. So again, how do you recognize the bull market? You've already learned this by now. The bull market is when the blue line is above the green line, right? The 50 is above the 150. That's a bull market. And in a bull market, whenever the price goes through a minor correction, right? Over here, we buy, we buy, we buy, we buy. We buy. We keep buying during corrections because those are great buying opportunities. All right? Now, every 8 to 10 years, what happens? The bull will turn into a bear. Okay? So in a bear market, how would you know? Very simple. The 50 blue line crosses below the 150 green line. And both lines are sloping down. They have to slope down. Remember that. So the moment you see that, we know that the bear has arrived. The, the, the moment the bear arrives, what do you do? 
you sell everything that you have. Sell everything, keep it in cash, and for the next one or two years, watch the market collapse by 30 to 40%, and you're in cash, safe and sound. Now, in my advanced training programs and in Wealth Academy, I'll teach you how to short sell the market, how to use inverse ETF so that during a bear market, you're also making money as the price collapses. So you're making money both ways. But again, that's in my advanced course that you can learn online or through my live training programs. Okay? So if you're not doing that, simply keep your cash as the market goes through a bear. And when you get back in again, again, you get back in again when the bear goes back into a bull. How do you know? Again, the 50 crosses above the 150, sloping up, slope, sloping up, buy back at the start of the bull, and ride the trend up again. It's as simple as that, okay? So you don't have to worry about reading news headlines and getting emotional and listening to all these uh, people on TV making predictions because no one can predict the future. We, we can't, we are not fortune tellers. All we are doing is we are following cycles of bulls and bears. That's it, all right? Okay, so to finally summarize what you've learned in this video course, we learned that you must invest in order to be financially secure and free. If you want to have any hope of retiring to have a comfortable life or to be rich, you have to get your money to grow. Again, if you save 15% of your income, assuming you make 5,000 a month or 60 grand a year, if you save 15% of that, you're saving 9,000 a year. Now, if you do not invest your money, right, you put your money under your mattress, you can see that after 25 years of saving 9,000 a year, you end up with 234,000, okay? And you have learned in the first part of the video that in order to retire comfortably, you need at least $2 million in retirement savings. If you spend about 4,000 a month, you need 2 million to retire, remember that. So if you don't invest your money, you end up broke like most people, so you have to invest, okay? now. If you simply buy the ETF, the index of the US markets and the Hong Kong markets and you just buy and you hold it through the ups and downs, you do dollar cost averaging, you'll be getting an average of 11% a year, which you have seen in the historical charts. So that means you end up with $1.2 million, which is not fantastic, but at least you got a million bucks in your retirement, right? But if you follow the trends, you enter in bull markets, you exit at the start of bear markets, you would push your returns to up to 15% a year. If your money can grow at 15% a year instead of 11%, you can see that your eventual result doubles. So a 5% difference doubles your eventual retirement savings plan. That's a huge amount. Okay? Now, if you learn how to pick individual companies and build a portfolio of great businesses, which is what I'm going to teach you in Wealth Academy of my life, training courses in Asia, or you take my online professional training course, then we'll be able to get about 20% a year or more. In fact, again, many of my students are achieving 30, 40, 50% a year building their wealth. Now, you just get 20% a year, you end up with $6 million. So there's a big difference between $200,000 and $6 million. In both scenarios, we're investing the same amount of money, but because of the difference in the return from 0% to 20%, your financial destiny will be very, very different. So I hope I've inspired you to take action. I've enlightened you that you can do really well investing in the markets. And if you'd like to find out more, subscribe for more videos in my channel. You can also go to wealthacademyglobal.com to find out about my live training programs in Asia in Wealth Academy or visit piranaprofits.com for my online professional stock and forex trading courses. This is Adam Koo, and I wish you all the very best to grow your wealth and achieve your financial goals. Take care, guys.